Hello and welcome inside Alumni Field for another presentation of WCBN Sports' coverage of Michigan softball. I'm Alex Drain, joined today by Charlie Brigham for a doubleheader between Michigan and Northwestern weather permitting. Weather forecast looks okay right now, but we'll see as it goes along. Michigan needs a bounce-back performance after last night's uh, defeat at the hands of the Wildcats. This is a huge series, two of the top three teams in the Big Ten, and Michigan has some reason to be optimistic today because they've got Alex Starocco in the circle. Yeah, absolutely, Alex. The name of the game today for Michigan has to be just contact. They struggled a lot yesterday just putting the ball in play. Only one, or sorry, two hits on the day. One of those, Michigan's lone run, a solo shot to right center field from Taylor Bump. And as you said, with Alex Rocco in the circle, it should be pretty easy sailing on the defensive end, knock on wood. But Michigan fans, obviously, looking for great production today. Yeah, different pitching matchup all the way around today. Yesterday it was Daniel Williams against Megan Bobie, and today it's Alex Storacco against Lauren Boyd. Storacco enters this game with the number one ERA in the NCAA, 0.41 on the season, a whip not much higher than that, and an impeccable 160 strikeouts in 86 innings pitch. This is the best offense she's faced so far this season. The best offense by runs per game in the entire conference in Northwestern. They gave Megan Bobian some trouble, also gave Michigan's defense some trouble last night, did the Wildcats. Michigan looks to be a little sharper in the field today. First pitch underway, and it is a called strike to Skylar Schellmeyer. The lineup today for the Wildcats, Schellmeyer, Rachel Lewis, and Jordan Rudd will begin this first inning. Morgan Newport, Angela Zedak, and Maeve Nelson, 4-5-6. And then Sydney Supley. There's a ball just outside. Supley is batting seventh. Nikki Cochran, eighth. And Lauren Boyd, the pitcher, ninth. Mac Dunlap playing third, but not in the batting order with the two way player at pitcher. 1 1 count to Shellmeyer. Storaco winds up. This one is swung on, popped up into foul ground. Taylor Bump moving over. Does she have room? Can't quite make the play, and she slides hard into. The Northwestern dugout, that did not look good. And she's quick up onto her feet. That's a good sign. Looks a little banged up, kind of stretching her calves out. And she's just trying to walk it off. The trainer and Carol Hutchins came sprinting out of the dugout. Yeah, she's rubbing off that right shin. The trainer came over, and she kind of shrugged him off right away. She looks to be fine, just... Seems to kind of just be a stinger. She, Like she said, she kind of took a hard fall into that dugout. Cleat caught the edge right where the dirt stopped and just slid out from underneath her. And she slid right down the stairs. And I have not been in that dugout personally, but I can't imagine uh, those are the softest stairs in the world. Dugouts generally made of concrete or something of that form. So looks like she is okay, both... Coach Carol Hutchins and the trainer heading off the field now, just shaking it off, sharing a quick few laughs with Natalia Rodriguez over there at shortstop, and looks like we're ready to go. Yep, that was a wild abandoned fielding play. Almost got it, but it was tailing quickly and took her out of the field of play into that dugout. Straco now ahead one and two. The wind up in the pitch, that one well high. Shellmeyer is a slap hitter, only 11 strikeouts on the season and 84 at bats, but that's no problem for Storaco and her prodigious season in the strikeout department. 2-2 two -two pitch, wind up, that one swung and fouled back. Just got a piece, shoot it over the screen and out of play. We'll take a look at the Michigan defense. Pretty standard today, bump. Rodriguez, Jimenez, and Allen left to right in the infield. And then in the outfield, Kirsten, Blair, Hoganrod. Storaco in the circle, 2-2 two -two coming, swing and a miss. And there's the first strikeout of the game. Great pitch from Alex DeRocco there. Went back to back with the rise balls before that, and then change up, got her on the outside corner. Shellmeyer, decent swing, but just came up empty. And then Hannah Carson behind uh, the plate. Should note that as well. That's the Michigan defense. Here comes Rachel Lewis, 360 hitters, got the second highest average on the team, and with five home runs, she's tied for the team lead in that department. 674 slugging, and Pitch number one goes by high and outside, called ball one. Yep, she'll step back in. Got Jordan Rudd on deck behind her. This is the dangerous part of the Northwestern order. 
1 0 on the way. That one also high. 2 and 0. Straco happy to face this group of hitters without anyone aboard. That's the importance of getting that first out in the inning. Lou Allen playing in at first. Bump pretty much straight up with the bag. Imena is deep in the hole trying to cover the territory that Allen may give up. There's a 2 0, and they say that one's just a little inside. Quickly runs to 3 and 0. Rachel Lewis went one for four in the game last night with one RBI, but should be said that she put a lot of hard hits on the ball, just couldn't seem to find the gaps. Straco checks the wristband. Now behind 3-0. and We'll see what she delivers here. And that one's a little high. Ball four. Straco hasn't had a huge problem with walks this season, but just a little all over the place right there and just couldn't quite get dialed in. Nothing too outside, but... Looks to reset here against a very good hitter in Jordan Rudd. Rachel Lewis, not too much of a threat with the speed on first base, but still very athletic, can get around the bases, so have to be wary, have to be locked in on the defensive end. She does have quite a few steals on the season. First pitch fouled back. You think the concern would be running into outs with some of your best hitters at the plate. Rudd's got the team best batting average, and Newport on deck Scott. Uh, tied with Lewis for the team lead in home runs. So some very, very good hitters at the plate here. First pitch was fouled off. Staracco now behind, or ahead 0-1 in the count, rather. That one taken a little high. Carson jumping right up to check the runner. Back to first base. This is a Northwestern team that when you look down the line at what they've done in the stolen base department, very impressive. Shellmeyer 6 for 7. Lewis 19 for 20. Then you go down, you have a 4 for 4, a 2 for 2, and a 1 for 1. Very few caught stealings this year. This one is swung on and popped up in foul ground. Allen gets called off. Jimenez is coming over, and she makes the play in foul territory. Two outs in the inning. Great play by Julia Jimenez there, covering a lot of ground, being vocal, being the leader out there on the defensive side, calling off Lou Allen. That's a huge out to get if you're Michigan. Yep. Jordan Rudd went 2 for 4 yesterday, had an absolutely scorching double off the left field wall. Huge piece to get out of that lineup. And you keep the runner at first. We'll see if they try to get more aggressive with Lewis potentially running. And she does go. Carson's throw down right in there. Oh, not in time. Rodriguez and the fans here thought they had her. Looked like a decent throw by Carson. Was right on the right side of the, of the bag where it needed to be. Rodriguez got the tag over, but Lewis can run. That was a close play. And Carol Hutchins immediately is going to have a conversation with the umpire, she did not agree with that call. That was a picture perfect throw from Hannah Carson. I mean, you couldn't get much better than that. Kept it low, one little skip right into the glove of Natalia Rodriguez, quick tag to the ground. I mean, that was picture perfect from a defensive standpoint, just didn't get the call. Very, very close, tough to tell from our angle where the tag was. I mean, those are bang, bang. Certainly the umpire had a better look at it than we do, but 0-1, the count. Straco's got to just focus on this hitter here, and Newport waves and misses. Now, Straco ahead 0-2. Great pitch from Straco there, high and outside. Nothing Morgan Newport could really do with that one. Newport is like Boyd, another one of those two-way players for Northwestern. Only hitting today. The windup, the 0-2, that one taken a little bit high, and you see... Lewis, having moved up to second, still dancing around down there. Taylor Bump kind of hugging that third base line as to not have to cover as much ground if Lewis does, in fact, take a shot. Newport struck out quite a bit this season, 20 on the year. We'll see if Straco gets another. There it is! Swing and a miss on a pitch way high and out of the zone, and Straco yelling, very clearly fired up as she leaves the circle, trying to get her hitters fired up as they will... Step into the batter's box for the first time today in the bottom of the first. Our score after one half of an inning, 0-0 Northwestern in Michigan. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. Alex Rocco just showing why she's been so dominant all season. Two strikeouts in the first inning, and the one out that wasn't a strikeout, a lazy pop-up in foul territory, just completely in command in the circle, showing you why she's Michigan's best. Here at Alumni Field, We've got this game going on between Michigan and Northwestern and across the way over at Ray Fisher Stadium. We've got a game between Michigan and Rutgers, both softball and baseball in very tight 
chases for their respective conference crowns entering the weekend. Softball was number one in the conference, and baseball was number two in the conference, a half game back of Nebraska there. So should be some pretty fun home weekends the rest of the way. Baseball's got a few more. Softball's got only one more, and that's against Rutgers uh, in a couple weeks. Michigan will be at Penn State next weekend, and then the huge series at Minnesota on Mother's Day weekend. The weekend after is the final home series of the season. In total, Michigan only going to get to play nine home games this year, which is extremely unfortunate, but it is what it is, and they've done well enough away from home so far, but need to defend their home territory here today and Sunday to solidify their spot atop the Big Ten against a very good team like the Wildcats, and they'll look to get it going here in the bottom of the first against Lauren Boyd. Lexi Blair will lead things off for the Wolverines. It'll be Blair, Rodriguez, and Allen, one, two, three. Bump is in the four hole today. Carson, five, Espen, six, Jimenez, seven, Hoganrod, eight, and Kirsten, nine. So we'll see what Lexi Blair can do here. The 448 average speaks for itself, and we'll try to get the offense going after a very quiet day yesterday but a different pitcher in the circle. First offering is taken just outside the zone. Lexi, not too successful at the plate yesterday, but put the bat on the ball quite a bit, had a lot of contact, just couldn't seem to find gaps. It's kind of the story of the game for the Michigan Wolverines yesterday. 1-0 is high, 2-0. It definitely felt like... In some sense, Michigan got a little unlucky and some of Northwestern's balls you know, managed to drop in in the outfield. Michigan's just hung up a little bit too much. And uh, again, this is a different pitcher, so it's a different plate approach. 2-0 on the way. That's inside, 3-0, and, and Boyd is struggling to find the zone early on, not missing by a ton. She does uh, have issued uh, 16 walks in 49 and two-thirds innings this season to 38 strikeouts, not a high strikeout pitcher, and Lexi is a contact hitter. We'll see if she's taking all the way on 3-0. Looked like she was. There's a called strike. The main defensive spotlight on this Northwestern team has to be Jordan Rudd behind the plate. I mean, caught two Michigan players stealing yesterday. Both of them were to tie Rodriguez on back-to-back -back attempts. 3-1 count. The wind up. The pitch. Blair hits this one. Hard hit right back to the circle and a quick throw over for Boyd. That's a good piece of contact, but poorly placed. Yeah, it's kind of been the story for Lexi Blair in these past few games. He's been hitting the ball hard and making solid contact. Like I said before, just can't seem to find gaps. We'll see if Natalia Rodriguez can get it going. She had a couple walks yesterday. I think it was a walk and a hit by pitch, rather. But that boosted the on-base up to 351, but she was thrown out twice on the base pass. A couple steal attempts came up futile in yesterday's game. Shows bunt, lays it down, foul. Game time temperature, 55 degrees in Ann Arbor. Wind blowing south-southeast at 7 miles an hour. A minute ago it was gusting the American flag out there in center, but now the flag is rather docile, just hanging on the pole at the moment. Concerns about precipitation, we'll get to that in a moment. Here's the 0-1. Pitch a little outside. The umpire seems to have a little tight zone here today. Seemed to be the case last night as well. Both pitchers kind of getting pinched a little bit. Megan Bobian struggled hitting her corners where Daniel Williams succeeded exceptionally. It was a huge part of the reason why she was so dominant against the Michigan hitters. 1-1 one, one count. Rodriguez takes that on the inside edge for a strike. The forecast currently shows 100% chance of rain at 1 p.m., but it's really slated to be more of a drizzle than anything hard, and right now it's showing precipitation, and there's actually, at least from what I can see, nothing here. There's a pitch down and away, two and two, so we'll monitor that, but you have to think if it stays a drizzle, they'll be able to play as long as they can. Yeah, game was moved up to noon. Yep. Just in you know hopes that they could get one game in before the rain started coming down too hard, but... It's not looking too bad right now. 2-2 two -two coming. Rodriguez swings and pokes this one in the air just over the shortstop. And an easy play there for Maeve Nelson. And that quickly means two outs in the inning. And here comes Lou Allen. You could hear that one coming off the bat. And Ty Rodriguez just got kind of handcuffed there right off the handle. And just, like I said, lazy, lazy line drive right to shortstop. So that'll bring Lou Allen to the plate now. 
And Lou is off to a very good season at this juncture. Six homers, hitting over 300. There are six homers. Leads this Michigan team to 587 slugging as a result called strike. Northwestern playing her straight up defensively, as you may expect. Outfield perhaps a little deep. The wind up in the 0 1. That one just off the outside edge. Again, that looks to be a tight outside corner. Maybe a little bit roomier on the inside edge. The outfield playing back that wind, like you said, even if it is a little bit, just blowing out towards the outfield. And Lou Allen, obviously not known for his speed, keeping everything in front of them if they can. 1 1. There's another one on that outside edge. Boyd is going to keep putting it there until she gets the call. Continues to not get it at the moment. We've seen pretty much every pitcher in the past two days try to paint that outside corner. The best to do it, Sarah Schaefer yesterday in her two innings of work. 2-1, one, went off speed, and that one a little high. Now 3-1. This is the second three-ball count of the inning for Boyd, who's not putting a ton of... Pitches over the plate in this frame, but she's gotten the first two outs and nobody aboard. Good hitters count. 3-1. Lou takes a nice cut. Follows it back to the screen. Count runs full. Off-speed kind of got Lou there a little bit. Dropped off the table at the last second. She was sitting on something that she could drive and just didn't get it. Great pitch by Boyd. Umpire shows the 3-2. Home plate umpire today, Carlos Guzman. 3-2, she swings and hits this one to right field. This one well hit, back to the track and making the play just in front of the wall there was Morgan Newport. Lou put a solid charge into that. That's why the outfield was playing deep, but it falls in front of the 200-foot wall in right field. Newport, great job opening her hips and covering a lot of ground to get back to that wall there. We saw her make a few plays like that yesterday, getting some balls in foul territory. We know she's athletic and just showing it off there. Michigan gets a couple good swings there in the inning, but they will not get anybody aboard and won't leave anybody as a result. Nothing, nothing headed to the second inning here at Alumni Field. Alex Duraco back out there in the circle, looking to continue this dominant campaign she's had so far. Two strikeouts in the top of the first inning and lazy pop up into foul territory. Only one base runner allowed on a four pitch walk. That base runner, of course, the number two hitter, Rachel Lewis. So it'll be Angela Zedak, Maeve Nelson, and Sydney Supley here. Five, six, seven to get things going for the Cats. You know, even with that double off the wall yesterday by Jordan Rudd and Taylor Bump's home run yesterday, the hardest hit ball of the day has to have gone to Zedak, that line drive right into the glove of Natalia Rodriguez would have been an easy double play, but the ball was hit so hard, almost knocked Rodriguez off her feet, caught yeah. her stumbling. Yeah, that was pretty. I mean, it looked like she'd been, you know, shot with a shotgun. I mean, it, you know, that was a heck of a drive. Yeah, Zedak hit the cover off that ball, no doubt about it. So Zedak will step in, playing left field today. 286 average on the season. Three home runs and eight doubles, though. Has only struck out 10 times in 84 at-bats. A good contact hitter. There's a called strike. Storaco freezes her. Incredibly effective once she gets on base. 24 hits this season, but she scored 21 runs. Yeah. And doesn't walk a ton either. Only eight walks. Oh, one swing and a miss. Great pitch from Starocco there. Not messing around with anything fancy. Just blew it by her. So, and she's ahead now, 0-2. And, and you face a pitcher like Starocco, who's in such a groove, it is so dangerous to fall behind 0-2 or even 1-2. and two. She's lining the bat level up. And now here it comes, and there's a swing and a miss. Blew it by her once again. Starocco just showing off the heat there. Now the around the horn goes a little haywire as Lou Allen's throw over to Jimenez <laughs> was off the mark and it rolled into center field. Fielders need to tighten it up a little bit. It is going to bring up Maeve Nelson. Nelson went 0 for 3 at the plate yesterday. 
but back that up with some stellar defensive play. A couple athletic plays over there at shortstop, including an over-the-shoulder catch on a soft line drive into the outfield. First pitch coming. Check swing. Did not go. Straco started her off high there and almost got the call, but regardless, Nelson, 244 hitter on the season. 337 on base, but high strikeouts, 27 of those in 90 at-bats. And she takes the strike right at what you would say is the letters, but in Northwestern's case is only a letter. It's just a single N on the pinstripe uniform. Should say the uniform matchup today is absolutely elite. Michigan in the maize jerseys, blue pants, Northwestern in the all-white pinstripes. Yep, with the purple socks, the purple batting helmet. 1-1, one, one, she swings and hits this one to right field. Well hit, but there's going to be room for Hogan run. She makes the play a couple steps in front of the warning track. That's the best hit ball today by the Wildcats, but it falls harmlessly into the glove of Haley, and now two outs in the inning. Maybe Nelson just kind of reached her hands out and poked that one to right field. That one really, the distance had more to do with Storaco's velocity than anything. Yeah. Sydney Supley now at the plate, 273 hitter. Takes quite a few walks. First pitch taken high. She's appeared in 19 games, started 18 of them. She is one of just two players in this Northwestern lineup who has not played all 29 games. Seven of their nine hitters have played in 29 and started 29 games. There's a 1-0 called strike. This has been a pretty consistent Northwestern lineup in that regard. It's only a couple spots there that they shuffle in and out. Got a deep bench to go to, as does Michigan if we get to that point but right now not much happening no hits so far just a single base runner one one on the way swing and a miss simply had the first hit of the game yesterday for northwestern a soft pop up in to no man's land behind julia jimenez and in, in front of Haley hoganrod simply in only she went one for three that hit her only but did a really nice job working some long at bats making megan Bobian and throw a lot of pitches Storaco ahead, one and two. We'll see if she dials up a strikeout pitch here. Wind up, and there's a swing and a miss. Alex Storaco, four strikeouts through two innings. She is locked in. Time for the Michigan Bats to pick her up as we will head to the bottom of the second. No score between Michigan and Northwestern. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. I mean, Storaco just, again, showing why she's been at the top of the rankings and everything in college softball this year. Total now up to 164 strikeouts in 88 innings pitched. So Boyd will go back out there. First pitch and her warm-ups looks pretty good. She had a strong first inning and throwing down there to Jordan Rudd as the Michigan hitters will watch from just outside their dugout. Taylor trying to get bump. a better sense. The first duo up for the Wolverines is 4-5-6. Taylor Bump followed by Hannah Carson and Lauren Essman. Bump was the bright spot yesterday. Had that home run. And she has been heating up recently, now up to five homers on the season, something we always talked about. The power was there if she could put the bat on the ball, and now, just like that, her batting average is shockingly up to 300. A really good senior campaign for her, and Michigan needed it at just this perfect time. She actually had a senior message up on the Jumbotron before the game. Looked like many family members and a canine of some sort were wishing her the best. Here's some cheers from the stands for the senior as she takes her spot in the batter's box for the first time today. First pitch on the way is a called strike. Michigan being real selective as the plate so far in this one, yesterday we saw them really lay off pretty much every first pitch. Danielle Williams had pretty much complete control of the plate whenever she wanted it on that first pitch of an at-bat. Bump stands in there. Second pitch coming, just chops it and right back to the circle, but they say it went off her foot. So it's a foul ball and looked to be a little ginger. Looked like it went off the front foot, the left one. Now she'll step out and just kind of Shake it off. Taylor Bump's lower legs taking a beating so far in this one, and 
first inning slid yeah. into the northwestern dugout chasing after a foul ball onto that right leg and now hits herself in the left one with a foul ball. 0-2 coming, just a little down and outside. That's a good pitch from Boyd just to sample there. Wasn't really aiming for the cold strike, but rather trying to get a swing and miss. Taylor did well to hold off there. One and two, the count. Yeah, great plate discipline there from the senior. The pitch, swing and a high pop-up into shallow left field. Trying to find it, and it's going to be dropped there by the... Center fielder, I believe, Schellmeyer, who came sprinting in. The shortstop, Nelson, went back, and then she couldn't find it. And the left fielder, Zedak, was in as well. And that one drops in. Michigan gets a bit of a gift. It's marked as a hit right now, but they got the leadoff runner on here in the bottom of the second. Not sure if the clouds were a problem there, but you could tell it was trouble because Nelson started back like she was tracking it and then suddenly just looked panicked kind of held out her arms like she couldn't find it. Schellmeyer was eventually the one who put a glove on the ball, but she covered a lot of ground, was deep in center field, ended up touching that ball kind of just outside the infield behind shortstop. Did you see the play last night in the Rays-Blue Jays game? It was kind of like that where uh, it was in the Tropicana field and they lost the ball in the roof, and the center fielder, Kiermaier, was standing there stunned, and then about 20 feet behind him, Randy Rosarena made a diving catch. It was one of the weirder plays you'll see, and it almost looked like that, right, where the shortstop there gets lost, and Schellmeyer kind of running from a mile away is the one who almost makes the play, but Michigan gets a benefit there, and we've got a pinch runner coming in, Audrey LeClaire on first base, and Hannah Carson at the plate. The corner's drawn in for a potential bunt. Carson isn't showing it, and she takes that pitch a little inside. Man, that is a tight corner. It was outside to righties. Now it's inside to lefties. I think it might just be tight all the way around. Not necessarily an inside-outside thing. It's what we saw last night as well. Strike zone real tight on the edges. A little bit of leeway up and down, but on the sides of the plate, it's it's got to be right in there. 1-0 coming. She swings and taps it foul. Corner still playing in. She hasn't shown bunt so far, and Hannah Carson definitely not the kind of player who bunts very much. Could be a dangerous scenario for Northwestern if Hannah Carson does put a solid bat on this ball. Yeah. I mean, with your corners playing that far up, it's going to be tough to stop. There will definitely be some room. Especially, it could be a tough play if she scorches it down the lines. That pitch taken outside. Two and one. LeClaire over there at first. Definitely a speed upgrade for the Wolverines over bump. Jordan Rudd caught that pitch on the outside corner and just dropped that left knee, took a look over at first base. You know she's not afraid to throw, has a great arm behind the plate. 2-1, swinging a ground ball right to first, going to throw down to second, not going to be in time. That's a productive out for Carson, moves the runner into scoring position. Well hit ball, but a nice defensive play there by Cochran to take care of it. And now it's an RBI opportunity for Lauren Essman. Cochran, great play to get to her forehand right there. On the, right on the line. Could have been a double if it got through. Like you said, very productive out. We now have Audrey LeClaire situated on second base. Some wheels as Lauren Esman steps up. You've got the left fielder. Came way in, Zedak. Now she's backing up. Right field's pretty deep, and center's shaded to right center. First pitch to Esman. She swings and hits this one to left field. It's going to be down, and it's off the wall. Here comes the runner, LeClaire. And Esman speeds into second. She's going to have an RBI double, and Michigan's got a 1-0 lead. Lauren Esman has been on fire this season. Great piece of hitting there. Outside pitch, and just drove it. Did what she needed to do. Didn't try to do too much with that ball. Got it on the outside half of the plate. Let it do the work for her. Threw her hands at it. Great piece of hitting. So runner now back on second. And another RBI opportunity, this one for Julia Jimenez. Michigan's now gotten two hits in the inning in that. You know, yesterday we saw Michigan have some troubles defensively. Here in this inning, it's Northwestern with troubles defensively. And it leads to a run for the Wolverines. First pitch to Jimenez is a called strike. Finally finding that outside edge is Boyd there. 0-1 the count. 
after that RBI, you have to think back to Hannah Carson's at bat and think about just how yeah powerful it was to get that runner into scoring position because without that ground ball, that run doesn't score. Nope. 0 1 swinging the ground ball right back to the circle, and they're going to try to get Esman. She's going to run back. She's going to be safe. I don't know what in the world Northwestern was doing there. They thought they had her in the pickle, and she said, No, you don't, and just ran right back to second, and the throw was late. Jimenez down to first. Now there's two on, and they don't even get any outs there on a ball right back to the circle. The Northwestern defense just isn't locked in right now. We're going to have a meeting out there on the mound, but great base running by Lauren Esman, being aggressive, making the defense make mistakes. Yeah, and she, you know, when it was snatched by Boyd, she looked back, she had Esman caught there for a moment, but then she just kind of started walking over to, you know, the area between second and third, the base paths, and then Esman just kind of started running back to second and kind of seemed like Boyd froze and then finally realized she had to throw back, but of course it's not a force at second, and that throw was not anywhere close to apply a tag, so just a real breakdown mentally right now for the Northwestern defense, and they need to get plugged back in as Haley Hoganrod steps up now with two on base. You know, when you practice those situations defensively, the one thing you stress is it's a lot better to just get the ball out of your hand early, make the runner change directions. And Boyd just kind of, I mean, she ran her back to second base, didn't allow her to advance, but both runners reached safely. Just get the ball out of your hand quickly there and, you know, allow your person on the other end to try to apply a tag. Hogan Ron now in the batter's box. First pitch coming, takes a called strike. Haley this season hitting 234. On base at 294, Michigan's looking to get her going. She does have one homer. Ball into the outfield, probably scores a run, takes another called strike. Seemed a little too patient at the plate at times this season. Kirsten waiting on deck. Michigan trying to scratch a couple more runs across in this inning. They've already got one to take a 1-0 lead. Warren Aspen, decent speed on second base, can get around the base pass. 0-2 coming, that one low. The runners a little off the base after each pitch, but not much there, just ready to start running if ball is put in play in a favorable area. 1-2, check swing, called strike three on the outer edge. Boyd starting to find that outside edge finally and rings her up. Now it'll be up to Sierra Kirsten. I don't think that check swing would have mattered either way. No. That pitch yeah. seemed like it hit the corner. Yeah, I don't think that it was called strike. I mean, uh, you know, swinging strike. Yeah, I think she held up there. That is going to bring up Sierra Karsten. Two outs, two runners on, one in scoring position, and Lauren Esman over there on second base. Michigan looking to put a couple more across here. First pitch coming, check swing. Did she go? Yes, she did. Yeah, I thought that was... All right, call, and they go down. I think that's Naomi Erdahl down there at third. Yep. Got Tyler Barfus, the other umpire, playing or standing uh, between first and second. Very deep in the hole, basically standing next to the second baseman, Lewis, there. 0-1 coming. Kirsten is a little late on that swing, 0-2. Big swing from Sierra Kirsten right there. Pretty much whenever we've seen her swing and miss this year, it's been on kind of big cuts like that. She does not have a homer on this season. 0-2, that one low. Yeah, this is a big opportunity for Kirsten. Made the starting lineup as a freshman and has played in all 26 games, 264 average, but really struggling to draw walks. And the strikeouts are a problem with 18 of them to lead the team. 1-2, swing and a miss. And that is some good pitching there by Lauren Boyd to get out of the jam. But Michigan does what it needed to do. Gets a single from Bump on some generous and rather poor defensive play from Northwestern. And then the big hit from Esman. And that's exactly what you want. Get that lead and now let Storocco go to work. Yeah, I mean, we said it the other day in our episode of East of the Rockies the Michigan softball podcast, we said for this Michigan team, really, when you, especially when you have Alex Storocco on the mound, three runs can win you a game. That's really all you need. And with the way Storocco's been pitching right now, one might even do it. 
Yeah, you never want to put a pitcher in that position where every run or every you know hitter is the tying hitter at the plate. But Storaco has been locked in so far. Four strikeouts, no hits, one walk. Took care of that easily. Two shutout innings. But again, this is an excellent Northwestern team offensively. You know, one of the things we talked about is entering this weekend, Michigan Northwestern's team batting average, team on base, almost identical between the two. But Northwestern scoring nearly two runs per game more than Michigan, doing better in those runners in scoring position situations. And part of that is their speed to move around the bases. And clutch hitting has powered this Wildcat offense. So far, haven't had many opportunities with runners on, period. We're going to see 8-9 top for this Northwestern Wildcat lineup. It's going to be Cochran, Boyd, and then back to the top of the order with Shellmeyer. We have a senior graphic for Sarah Schaefer, who got to play in last night's game. has been a pleasant surprise this season. Hasn't gotten to pitch very much with the dominance of Obian and Storaco, but when called upon, has been very good this year. Yeah, and two innings of work yesterday. Sarah Schaefer kind of put on a show. Really nice job of hitting the corners. First pitch, gets a little outside to the lefty hitter, Cochran. Cochran and Boyd, much like in Michigan's order, where 8 and 9 are the two weakest hitters in the lineup. Same thing here. By average, these are the two worst hitters in the order. 241 for Cochran and just a 114 for Boyd on deck. Carson runs out there to have a conversation, but the conversation didn't last very long. Just said a couple words, and then they went right back to their positions. Not sure what there would be much to talk about, given you just had one pitch after a long break. Now here's a short pop fly into center field. That's going to drop right in front of Lexi Blair. Soft contact, but it falls just in front of Blair. And Northwestern gets themselves their first hit. Found the right spot. Northwestern have really been able to do that the entirety of the time we've seen them. Yesterday they had a few hits that just dropped kind of right in no man's land like that one. Not quite shallow enough where the infield can get to it comfortably and definitely not deep enough where Lexi Blair can come up and get that one on the run. Great piece of hitting. And pretty predictably we're going to have a pinch runner here. It's going to be Sammy Stanley coming in. Cochran not a stealing threat whatsoever. No attempts on the season. And so they're going to make a change with Stanley coming in. Have to wait to see her stats this season as a runner. But that'll bring up Lauren Boyd, and Boyd as a 114 hitter might be pin, uh, bunting here. I think that would be a possibility to try to move a runner into scoring position. And she is showing it, and she lays it down. Bump comes over, quick throw over, and that's well executed. 5-4 put out as Jimenez covers the bag. Carson backing up to third. Move, runner moves up to second. S second time today, Northwestern's had a runner in scoring position. Now they got the top of their order up. Shellmeyer with Lewis on deck. Just as we saw Hannah Carson do it in the bottom half of the second inning. Productive out right there from Northwestern, especially with Sammy Stanley, a runner with great speed over there on first base, advancing to second now. We saw her pinch run yesterday, had a stolen base. And she's going, or takes a called strike. I was talking about the runner Stanley who Started running like she was going, and Rodriguez, this is the concern here because at Shellmeyer, the slap hitter, you got to play the corners in, but you've also got a runner with a threat to uh, steal third, which means you have to pull Natalia Rodriguez over to the bag to cover there for a stolen base attempt. Here's a pop fly in the infield. Rodriguez right under it, and that's a good second out for Alex Duraco. That kind of shift of Natalia Rodriguez over towards third base to cover the steal played in their favor. They really had to take half a side or half a step to the side and that pot fly fell right into her lap. And now you can relax a little bit. Rodriguez can move back into the hole because as I was going to say, the concern with her playing to cover the bag is that you leave a gaping hole over on the left side. Now she gets to play straight up with a more conventional power hitter at the plate in Lewis. First pitch coming is a little bit high. Stanley's going to keep bouncing around down there at second. But Storaco now with two outs in the inning and a runner on second. Behind 1-0 to Lewis. Lewis today drew a walk in the first inning and was stranded at second after stealing that base. 1-0 coming. She swings, hits this one right to Rodriguez on a leaping play. 
Wasn't super hard hit, but she did have to jump up a little bit in the rather short stature of Natalia, but she gets Alex out of it after a bloop single to center, and three goose eggs on the board for Alex Duraco. Michigan has a 1-0 lead as we head to the bottom of the third. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. Northwestern leaves another runner stranded in scoring position, second runner in back-to-back -back innings with somebody, or second time in back-to-back -back innings with somebody stuck on second base at the end. Not something you like to see if you're the Wildcats, especially with a pitcher as dominant as, as Alex Duraco. You want to take advantage of every opportunity you can get. But with that being said, we are going to head to the bottom half of the inning in Michigan, back out on the offensive attack. Looking at the standings in the Big Ten, Minnesota won last night. 3-0 defeat of Iowa. Iowa is a scrappy team who took a game off of Northwestern last weekend, and Michigan would definitely like it if Iowa could swipe one off of Minnesota this weekend. Of course, Minnesota and Michigan's fate will intertwine in a couple weekends in Minneapolis. Over at Ray Fisher Stadium, nothing, nothing between Michigan and Rutgers in the top of the third. Yeah, the fans here in both Alumni Field and over at Ray Fisher Stadium kind of getting two games for the price of one. You can <laughs> see right past the outfield wall and get a view from center field from the bleachers right in front of us of Ray Fisher Stadium. Yeah, I remember doing a game here one time where Michigan hit a walk-off home run at Ray Fisher, and you could see the bench empty and everything as they mobbed the hitter at the plate. That was pretty cool. Would not recommend watching baseball games from this vantage point. You lose a little bit of perspective. Hard to see the left and right field corners. Also pretty hard to see the ball that <laughs> about 500 feet away is home plate. So Michigan's got the top of the order leading off. Lexi Blair takes the ball down and in. 1-0 the count. Lexi had a sharp ground ball right back at Boyd who took care of it for the first out of the game. 1-0 on the way. She swings and misses, 1-1. One one. Kind of to put into perspective how dominant Lexi's been this so far this year. So far in this series against Northwestern, she's 0 for 4, but the batting average still sitting yeah. at a team high, 443. Looking for her first hit of the weekend. 1-1 one, one coming. Ooh. Boyd got squeezed a little bit on the outer edge, 2-1. Rodriguez on deck, and Allen in the hole. Second time through this lineup, Michigan knows where the zone is and knows what they have to get after. 2-1 coming. She swings and late, says this one into right field, but well hit, and right there is Newport. Another back good swing back. from Lexi, but again, not finding the holes right now. Back-to-back at-bats where Lexi Blair has hit the ball hard, but just straight to... The Northwestern defenders, and Ty Rodriguez is going to step back up for her second at-bat today. First time up, popped up to shortstop. So that'll bring Rodriguez up. She popped up to the shortstop, her first time up. Takes a pitch down and away, 1-0. and Rodriguez, a switch hitter, hitting from the right side today. Saw her stay on that right side entirely yesterday. one -oh on the way, called strike, right at the letters. One and one. Nice pitch right there by Boyd. Doesn't bother trying to go to off speed, just gets a strike and evens this count back up at 1-1. One -one. She shows bunt, pulls it back, and that's another very, very close pitch and another ball, two and one. Boyd's command in spite of the amount of three ball counts she's faced. It's been very good, she's hitting her spots. Boyd and Dunlap both crashed for that one. Cochran was back towards first base, but that pitch looked like Rodriguez might have put it down the first base line. Could have been a potential hit. Yep, always a threat. Not gonna bunt there, and she watches that pitch sail high. That's one of the worst misses Boyd has had today in context. Three and one the count, and that rod in a good hitter's count. Going to be looking for Natalia Rodriguez to swing away here. Just try to put some solid contact down. 3-1, called strike, 3-2. and two. 
looked at it and decided not to offer. Now the count runs full. Michigan looking to get their first walk of the day. With three balls, that's a good pitch to take right at the knees. 3-2, she swings and laces this one into center field and coming over to make the play is Shellmeyer. Man, Michigan has hit two balls right on the screws in this inning, but both were hit too hard, hung up there too much, and the fielder is able to get over for both plays. Now two outs and Lou Allen's up. You know, even though uh, the stats don't show it, both of those have, have to have had an impact on Lauren Boyd. She's kind of leaving balls over yeah. the middle of the plate, and eventually Michigan is going to find those gaps. Well, and now you got your two best power hitters coming up, Allen, and then if Bump gets a chance in this inning, if not, she'll lead off the next inning, and this is their second time through. Lou, of course, hit a ball really hard her first time up on a fly out to right that fell just short of the wall, and with Boyd leaving a couple balls over the plate to some hitters that don't quite have the raw power of Allen, this is a, a good recipe. She's ahead now 1-0 in the count. Second pitch on the way. She swings and chops this one in the field of play. This is going to be tough. It was touched in fair territory. And Allen's going to get down to first with an infield single. She is not the world's speediest runner, but that was a tough ball on the third baseline with a high hop and just biffed there by Boyd and I think the third baseman Dunlap. And Lou's able to get an infield single. Both Lauren Boyd and Mac Dunlap ran over to that one. Looked like they were going to try to let it bounce foul. Yeah, and they and got it, in the way. Yeah, it just bounced up and hit the pitcher Lauren Boyd in the chest. So Lou reaches safely, and that's going to bring up Taylor Bump with one runner on and two outs. Taylor at the plate. Hit a pop fly that dropped in. Called as a single her first time up, and there's a ball that just misses. 1-0 the count. Your Lou Allen over there at first base have to be wary of Jordan Bo or of Jordan Rudd's arm behind the plate. Can't get too greedy with your secondary lead. Yeah, concern of a throwback. 1-0 coming off speed froze Taylor, but they say it missed as well. 2-0. The reality is that with Lou at first, the ball's probably got to leave the yard for Lou to score on a hit here from Taylor Bump, unless it really gets away from the fielder. She'll be going on contact with two outs, but Obviously not the speediest runner in Michigan's team. 2-0 coming. Taylor swings and hits this one high in the air to left field. Got a little two under it there, and Zedak makes the play. Michigan hits three balls hard to the outfield, and their only hit is one that <laughs> was barely tapped. That's how softball and baseball work sometimes. Michigan clings to their 1-0 lead. They'll head to the top of the fourth. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. Yeah, Taylor Bump had her hitters count 2-0. Just couldn't quite drive that ball like she wanted to. Got the pitch she wanted right down the pipe, but like you said, Alex, just kind of got under it a little bit, kept it up in the air, and kept it from leaving the yard. Michigan got some good swings there. We have yet to see any swings like that off of Storocco. Storocco has been... Having a day so far. Four strikeouts through three innings of work. Two in the first, two in the second. Of course, Northwestern only tallying one hit. That coming last inning and kind of a bloop single from Nikki Cochran. She'll get three, four, five. Rudd, Newport, and Zedak here in the top of the fourth. Northwestern ended last inning, leaving a runner stranded on second base. As we said then, it's even more evident now as the game is getting further and further in and the rain starts to fall. Northwestern can't afford to leave runners on, especially with a dominant pitcher like Alex Duraco in the circle. Yeah, it's tough for us to tell what degree of drizzling is going on right now because we are in a press box and we're under the overhang trying to see... The wind is blowing the little flags around, but still nothing big enough to get that American flag moving. Some fans have put ponchos on. First pitch to Rudd is high. Looks like the event staff has got a poncho on in center field. And there's a few people sitting in the seats that are not covered by the overhang that have umbrellas, mostly Northwestern fans. You can kind of see... 
with the backdrop of the wall in center field of Ray Fisher. That It's coming down at a pretty steady clip. There's another ball high to Rudd, 2-0. and oh. Straco just losing the top of the zone for a moment. That increases the potential for wild pitches and other defensive issues. If you get a soggy ball that's tough to handle. 2-0 to Rudd. That one flutters down and in. 3-0 and now. Storanko's got a lock back in. And just as we say that about the ball, Hannah Carson takes a look at that one after that 2-0 pitch and hands it to the umpire in exchange for a new dry one. That one might have been a little slippery. 3-0 and the count. The pitch, this one is poked right at us, but it goes off the screen, three and one. That one coming right at us, yeah, had the screen not been there. Great 3-0 pitch from Alex Dorocco. Did you see the clip that went viral of the guy in the college baseball game catching the foul ball in the press box with his bare hand? I almost got one out, in, out at UCLA last year, fell just sort of our spot on the roof of the press box. Would have had to dive over the table for it. 3-1, that one high. And Jordan Rudd draws a leadoff walk. Second walk today for the Wildcats. Rudd is not one of their top base dealers, though. We'll see if they dial up another pinch runner. Mm. Looks like they will. Yep. North Northwestern taking full advantage. We saw them do it yesterday as well. And... Looks like it is going to be Emma Bartz. We saw her in the last inning of yesterday's contest. So she'll be down there at first, and now the concern for Carson, obviously, is you know, the exchange and the throw down to second if you can't grip the ball very well. Morgan Newport steps in, power hitter, with a runner on, and Carson jumps up to snag it. That's another ball high from Storocco and almost all of her pitches have missed high. And now Jen Brundage is going to come out for a conversation. Try to settle Storocco down. Morgan Newport struck out swinging in her first time up in the top of the first inning. This is now only her second time up in the top of the fourth. If you're just tuning in, we'd like to thank you for listening to WCBN Sports coverage of Michigan softball live from Alumni Field. The rain's starting to come down. You know, the game time did get moved up. We're still five minutes shy of what would have been the original yep. time of the first pitch. The game moved up in caution of this rain. Obviously, today was scheduled to be a doubleheader. Just trying to get as much softball in today as we can before the rain ceases play. Hopefully, we don't have that problem. But Well, you, again, you look at the forecast as there's a bunt put down fouls. Play resumes. You have a 100% chance of rain at 1, 100% at 2, but it continues to just say drizzle, you know, as opposed to a, a driving rain like perhaps uh, was projected in the forecast yesterday or two days ago. And if it just continues to drizzle, they can continue to play. But again, it will have an effect on the game. 1-1 one, one showing bunt again, pulls it back. I guess that missed outside, 2-1. Lou Allen and Taylor Bump practically on top of Morgan Newport there, coming all the way in for that bunt attempt. Northwestern trying to move a runner over again. Two one and Newport swings and skies this one to center field, right at Lexi Blair. She comes in and she makes the play. That's a big first out. Lexi with all the time in the world to come in and get under that one. Newport just got way under it, launched it way up in the air. One out now, and that'll bring Zedek to the plate. They did not get the runner over, still standing at first. That may be up to Zedek now. Zedek also struck out swinging in her first time up. That coming in the top of the second inning. Bart's down there at first, got six steals on the year. There's a swing and a big cut and a big miss from Zedek. Bart's has not been caught either. And this Northwestern team just deadly on the base paths. And Carson came very close to nabbing a runner in the first. Zedek with a long, smooth swing. 
0-1 on the way. That one way high and a good job by Carson to reach that glove up there and snare it. Any ball to the backstop and you bet that Bartz will be eager to move up. Yeah, Bart's got that left foot on the inside of the, or outside of the bag, rather. And this one is swung on and hit again, sky high to center field, almost an identical play, a little more shallow, though. And Lexi Blair makes another routine catch. Now two down in the inning, and that will bring up Maeve Nelson. Another great pitch from Sirocco, just getting these Northwestern hitters to pop the ball up with speed on first base. It's crucial not to let them drive the ball. Yep. And obviously two pop-ups, no opportunity to move up. We'll see if now they get even more aggressive with Barnes when you're down to two outs in the inning. And the runner is going. Carson throw down. They got No, it's safe. Oh, boy. And the Michigan fans are just screaming at the top of their lungs, and Carol Hutchins is going to come out and talk to the umpire's uh, she just walks out, not going to have a conversation, I think, just standing there showing her displeasure. The fans in front of us are really yelling. I mean, I was ready to say, got her. That throw beat her for sure. The question is whether the tag beat her. We can't say from our angle, but it was close. Yeah, from up here, it seemed like Emma Bartz was dead to rights. I mean, great throw by Hannah Carson. She didn't get a good jump either in what seemed like a solid tag, but... A runner now in scoring position with two outs for Northwestern. There's another called strike. Strike goes ahead 0-2. She can get one swing and miss here. It doesn't matter what just happened in the field of play. Would we'll not be surprised to see Coach Carol Hutchins have a word with the umpire after this inning. Like you said, count is 0-2. Two outs and runner on second as Strako goes to the windup. The pitch, swinging a fly ball to left field. This one well hit. Back to the track to the wall, and it's gone! A home run! Maeve Nelson turns on one, and Northwestern takes a 2-1 lead. Maeve Nelson just drives that ball. Straco gets caught, leaving it over home plate on an 0-2 count. And Nelson just sat on it and drove it. Michigan obviously unhappy with that one. The fans just as unhappy, if not worse, after what could have been Call the blown call at that steal on second base. Northwestern capitalizes on it and takes the lead, two to one. Well, you never want disputes to potentially determine games. Always rough when something like that turns out to be extremely consequential. But regardless, you got to give credit to Northwestern for jumping up and taking advantage there. Supley at the plate. She waves and misses. Michigan's hitter's going to have their work cut out for him now. Trailing 2-1, to one, and Straco's got to get out of this inning. That's a tough count to give up a home run in. An 0-2 count. Just didn't quite locate that pitch where she wanted it. 0-1 on the way. That one flutters in there for a called strike. Straco has just been kind of blowing it past these Northwestern hitters since the rain has started to fall a little harder. Has had to take a little bit off of it to maintain control, and that pitch to Maeve Nelson just left over the plate. 0-2, swing and a miss, and Starocko now is yelling to try to fire her hitters back up as Michigan's got some work to do now, trailing 2-1. to one. As we go to the bottom of the fourth, you're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. After giving up that home run, Alex Starocko comes right back at Sidney Supley, just Gets her waving at three pitches to send Michigan into the bottom half of the fourth. As you said, Alex, they've got some work to do. The lead is now in favor of Northwestern. The score, 2-1 to one as we head to the bottom of the fourth. As Michigan goes back out on the offensive attack, due up is going to be 5-6-7. Hannah Carson, Lauren Esman, and Julia Jimenez, followed by Haley Hoganrod and Sierra Kirsten before going back to the top of the order. Lauren Esman. The only one of those five with a hit today. Had a single in her last time up as well as an RBI. I am just queued up the BTM Plus stream. Get another look at that stolen base. I think she was out, but that was a bang-bang play. Seems like 
almost like Emma Bartz thought she was out as well. She kind of got up and started walking off the base. Yeah, I think she was out. <laughs> but it was close, we'll say that. I, I think Bartz knew, knew she got <laughs> tagged as well, just watching that replay and her mannerism. She got up and started walking right off the field. And now, predictably, you have Carol Hutchins in her third base coaching position with Michigan's hitters at the plate. <laughs> Chatting up. Naomi Erdahl down there at third. Michigan's hitters have lost three, uh, left three runners on. Trying to go to work here in the fourth. Carson watches that one skip in. Carson 0 for 1 today, but that last ground out was a productive one. Put the runner on second base, which eventually scored off the Lauren Essman double. One zero count. That pitch inside two and zero. Hitters count due up for Hannah Carson. Going to be looking to drive one here. Control for both pitchers seems to be wavering a little bit as the rain continues to fall here at Alumni Field. Two zero swing and a grounder right back to the circle. How many of those have we seen today? And a quick one three put out. Boyd kind of handcuffed Hannah Carson there on the. 2-0 hitters count, but Carson still put good contact down. Just again, couldn't find the gap. Michigan's been struggling to do so, but one person who hasn't was Lauren Essman, that single, or that double rather, down the left field line in her last time up. Got a pitch in the outside corner and just let the ball do the work, threw her hands at it. And was eventually, it was actually an RBI to score Michigan's lone run. That pitch misses the zone, 1-0. Lauren Essman currently hitting 364 for this Michigan team. Second highest average on the team, right behind Lexi Blair. 1-0 is a ball. 2-0 is a sign of how tight these, the strike zone has been today both ways. Storaco, 33 out of 52 pitches have been strikes. That's about 63%. Boyd now at 30 of 55, 55% strikes. Those are... Rather low for two solid pitchers. 2-0, and Essman swings, hits this one to left field. It's well hit back, and it goes over the fence, but just foul. Essman sitting on that 2-0 pitch. She knew what was coming, and practically the same pitch that she drove that double to left field on last time. Essman's got power all the way around, and that one a great piece of hitting. Just wind pushed it a little bit. As you said, tails foul over the fence. And I mean that, you know, that was a good swing, but it didn't look like a, a monster swing, and yet it clears the fence. Shows the, the raw power that she has. 2 1, called strike on the inside edge. 2 and 2. Back in that Friday game of the series with Maryland, we saw Lauren Esmond hit a monster solo home run that almost cleared the grandstands in right field, hit the top protective cage. 2-2, swing, and just rolls it over to second. Going to have to be a quick scoop and flip over, and it is in time. Nice defensive play there. And just like that, two outs in the inning. Lewis makes the play, and now Julia Menez comes up. Rachel Lewis, a rock over there at second base. Steady as they come on the defensive end. Menez is a contact hitter, just four strikeouts on the season, three walks, puts a lot of balls in play. Two homers on the year. And boy, would one of those be big right now as Michigan still trailing 2-1 to one with two outs in the bottom of the fourth. She swings and rolls this one over to the third base side. Foul. Coach Carol Hutchins wanted nothing to do with that one. Just kind of walked away. Sometimes you see some third base coaches try to make an athletic play and throw their hand at one to try and stop it. Hutch wanted nothing to do with it. 0-1 count to Jimenez. In the on-deck circle is Haley Hoganrod. Infield playing pretty much straight up. 0-1 down and away, 1-1. One and one. Wind seems to be 
blowing out towards left field right now. Might have had something to do with the fact that that Lauren Esman foul ball got over the wall. One one skips in two and one. And it just pulls that back right foot out of the way. Is it? Yeah, you know, as you said, skips in. <laughs> Saw Daniel Williams struggle with that a few times yesterday, kind of bouncing the ball over home plate, hitting the dirt before it even got there. Two one count on the way towards Jimenez. Pitch, swinging a little out in front of it, two and two. Julia Menez looking for her first hit of this weekend series against Northwestern, currently sitting at 0 for 4. As we hear some noise coming from the Northwestern dugout, that was one thing that Northwestern was really good at yesterday, was just controlling the energy in the stadium. I mean, until that Taylor bump home run, it seemed like almost like it was a home game for Northwestern. 2-2, she swings and lines this one into right field. Hard hit ground ball, and that's a two-out single. Michigan's done a lot of hitting with two outs in this game. And now a runner aboard for Hoganrod. You love to see that if you're Michigan. They've been putting the bat on the ball and making a solid contact all game long, just haven't been able to find gaps. But that one gets through the infield and puts a base runner on for Haley Hoganrod stepping up now. Hoganrod struck out looking in her last time up. That in the bottom of the second inning, back when Michigan scored their only run. That count went to 3-2 before Haley took a called third strike. Fourth hit of the game for Michigan. Hoganrod takes a called strike one. Hoganrod not really known as a power hitter, only one home run in the air that one and inside the park home run against Michigan State, but you know she can hit the long ball. Saw her hit it in one of the closing games of last year's campaign out in Los Angeles. 0-1 oh, is a little inside, one and one. Mena has a decent secondary lead over there at first base. Again, have to be wary of Jordan Rudd behind the plate. Great arm back there and not afraid to throw over. 1-1, one, one, Haley swings and lines this one into right field, a base hit. And Jimenez will stop at second. Michigan's hard hit ball is finally starting to get down a little bit, and now two are aboard with two outs in the inning. And a runner in scoring position for Sierra Kirsten, and I think we might have a pinch hitter upcoming. little sense of deja vu there as both Julia Jimenez and Haley Hoganrod practically the same exact hit, hard line drive through the, the gap between second baseman Rachel Lewis and Nikki Cochran over there at first base. And it looks like Lexi Voss is going to be the pinch hitter. Kiki, or sorry, Bonnie Thole rather, and Jennifer Brundage and Carol Hutchins all talking there around home plate. Lexi Voss hitting, hitting 250 in 24 bats this year, six hits. She's also scored six times. She's got more raw power than Kirsten does, and I think that's a consideration here. Kirsten's first at bat did not look particularly good and did not make contact with the ball. I think this is the right decision to go to a pinch hitter here. Boss, three RBIs on the season, potential for more. And now we're going to have a pinch runner as well. Thais Gonzalez will replace Julia Jimenez down at second, giving a little more speed for the potential game tying run. Yeah, even more grounds for Lexi Voss to be able to knock one across here. A single would most definitely score one here with Thais Gonzalez on second base. Now, like you said, as long as it leaves the infield. Plenty of speed. So Voss in a big moment for the sophomore. Lexi Blair in the on-deck circle. Should we get to her? Bottom of the fourth, two on, two outs. 2-1 two Northwestern lead, Michigan threatening. First pitch taken low. 
The benefit of a tight strike zone like this is as a hitter, you don't have to swing at any pitches you don't really like. You're getting the benefit of the doubt on most borderline calls today. Yeah, most of the strikeouts we've seen are strikeouts swinging. Very few have gone down looking. 1-0, and another one. I mean, <laughs> Jordan Rudd has taken a long time trying to frame that ball after it rain, uh, hits the glove, and nothing coming. Now Voss ahead, 2-0, a good hitter's count. Lauren Boyd kind of kicking the dirt at the back of the circle there. A little obviously, frustrated. Obviously frustrated. She's kind of getting squeezed. 2-0 on the way. Voss just taps this one foul. Check swing. It rode in on the hands. 2-1. and one. One. Looked like it would have been ball three had it not hit the bat of Lexi Voss. Kind of hit just above her hands. I think it was almost defensive there trying to, trying to get out of the way. A very feeble swing as she was kind of leaning herself back. Two and one the count. That one skips in, three and one. Boyd has not found the zone on any of her four pitches yet. Got the ch check swing foul ball to make it three and one, but again, Voss in a really good position here. She can get aboard. Lexi Blair, the best hitter in the Michigan lineup, coming up. 3-1 on the way, ball four down and in. And now a real pickle for the pitcher Lauren Boyd with two outs. You can hear the Michigan faithful in the stands getting amped up, stomping their feet, clapping their hands. This could change the tide of this one. Michigan still down two to one, but bases loaded for Lexi Blair. And there is an example of why that was such a good decision to pinch hit because Sierra Kirsten has zero walks and 72 at-bats, and Lexi Voss able to draw one there. Now Blair at the plate. We've seen her put some good swings today. Blair, 15 RBIs on the season. First pitch coming, called strike on the outer edge. Boyd finally gets a strike on a, no <laughs> on a pitch nibbling at the edge, and a fan... Right in front of us says, I don't know, I think that was a ball based on what the umpire has been calling. I would generally agree, but it is what it is. 0-1 count. That's a pitch down and away, 1-1. One and one. That one a little farther out than that first. So, as you said, count tied up 1-1. Lexi Blair with ample ground to make an impact. Bases loaded, two runners in scoring position and good speed over there on first base as well. 1-1 one, one count. The wind up, the pitch. That one high, 2-1 and one in the crowd, clapping. Natalia Rodriguez over there in the on-deck circle getting ready. Well, Boyd's command of the zone and ability to hit her spots on the corners wavering a little bit. And Blair's worked herself into a hitter's count, 2-1. The Northwestern outfield rather shallow. That one skips in, three and one, and Jordan Rudd a nice block there to keep Thais Gonzalez at third. But Blair on a really good position here. Uh, hitters count, if it's in the zone, you're likely to get something to drive. And if it's not, you tie the game. Bases Blair. loaded, two outs, three one count on Lexi Blair. Blair with potential here. The 3-1, she swings and chops this one over to short. It gets through. One run scores. It rolls by the center fielder. It's going all the way to the wall. Three runs score. Lexi rounding third. They're sending her home. And it's going to be an inside the park grand slam. What a <laughs> hit by Lexi Blair. That one hard hit ball in the infield. <laughs> Haley Hoganrod. Distracting the shortstop, Nave Nelson. Great piece of base running, and that ball gets all the way through, slides past the center fielder, Shellmeyer, and Lexi Blair showing off the wheels. Inside the park, grand slam. That's not something you see every day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you could potentially make a case for an error on the center fielder, Shellmeyer. I mean, that was a really tough play for the shortstop, Maeve Nelson, and we're going to have a scoring decision here. Grand slam. It is a grand slam, we've been told. So Michigan, back out in front. 
What a change of momentum, change of the tides as Michigan takes the lead five to two. We're not done yet, yells a fan right in front of us as there's a called strike. Yeah, I mean, Schellmeyer, the center fielder, came over into the left center gap, and I think, I'm not sure if she intended to slide, but it looked like, you know, she lost her balance there and went down, and the ball went under her. The shortstop, Nelson, had a very difficult play as the 0-1 to Natalia Rodriguez is a called strike going too, because Nelson was trying to judge the ball, and it took a high hop that was kind of difficult to figure out, and she had a runner right in front of her, obscuring her vision. And then once it got into the outfield, then you saw Zedak and Schellmeyer converge. They both go down, and then it gets by them all the way to the wall. And once you knew it was rolling there as there's a ball high, it was over with Lexi Blair's speed once it got to the fence. Haley Hogan had a great veteran base running move, just kind of chopping her feet in front of Maeve Nelson and then jumping over the ball at the last second to just completely obscure her view. Schellmeyer covered a lot of ground as the 1-2 goes by for... Ball number two, we're going to be even at 2-2. Schellmeyer covered a lot of ground and laid out for that one, but just couldn't get there in time. And the speed of Lexi Blair paying off. 2-2 Two -two count, the windup, the pitch. That one bounces, or not bounces, it falls into the glove low, 3-2. and two. Allen on deck, this is a monstrous inning for Michigan. They put four runs on the board after a really demoralizing top of the fourth where you had a disputed call at second, then a two-run homer immediately after. 3-2, and Rodriguez hits this one over to short. Going to be a quick play for Nelson. Bounces in. Nice pick at first by the fielder Cochran, and that'll do it. But Michigan gets four runs on an inside-the-park ground ball grand slam. You don't see that every day. Michigan takes the 5-2 advantage. And a wild fourth inning, six runs combined between the two teams. Michigan's got a three-run lead. And that's what we were talking about. You know, you have an unfortunate situation there with Starocco and, uh, in the top of that inning. And as a result, your hitters come up, and they pick her up, and Charlie, all with two outs. Yeah, Michigan showing that they're not phased by that number up on the scoreboard. They're just playing and playing their brand of softball. And one big thing that those runs do is they take the pressure off Alex Tarako. I mean, she's been incredible all season long. Like we said, one of the top in all of college softball and strikeouts, the total sitting at 165 right now. But you can't put all the pressure on her. The bats have to do some work, and they did there in the bottom of the fourth inning. Michigan's three-run lead now. Due up for Northwestern is going to be 8-9 top. It's going to be Cochran, then Boyd, then... Shellmeyer. And this is where you really need the old shutdown inning from Alex. You know, to you, you get the lead back intact. You need a quick frame and get your hitters back up there. Cochran with a single her last time up and then was pinch ran for. So I just watched the replay of that one. And, yeah, with a high hop to short. And as you mentioned, a great base running play by Hoganrod. The problem for Shellmeyer is she was playing so shallow, and you had noted that before the play, that she did not have a good angle to come in on that ball. It was coming from like a strange diagonal point, and then it rolled by her, and at that point it was over. Yeah, the outfield playing, playing shallow, I guess kind of expecting that hard ground ball through the infield to potentially make a play at the plate, but it comes back to bite him. His first pitch from Starocko is hit high in the air towards center field. Haley Hoganrod now in center field covering a lot of ground to come in and grab that one. That's going to be an effective out, an efficient one as well. One yeah. pitch and one out here in the top of the fifth. Uh, we will update you now on the defensive changes. The Michigan coaching staff had a conversation with home plate umpire Carlos Guzman, and they are going to keep Kirsten out of the game, shift Lexi and Hoganrod both over, and put the other Lexi Voss in there in right field. So Blair Hogan, Rod Voss left to right now in the outfield. There's a called strike. One out in the inning. Lauren Boyd, the pitcher, up to the plate. And there is someone warming in the Northwestern pen. There's a late swing and a miss. Quickly ahead is Tarako 0 and 2. Can't quite see from this angle, but we'll give you info as soon as we have it on who is warming up down there. 
No activity in the Michigan bullpen. The windup and the 0-2 went off speed and it just fluttered low. One and two, that's a good pitch. Slow boy down a little bit. That one just inches away from being a strike. Great pitch from Alex Draco. Dropped off the table at the very last second. Good hold by Boyd. Now count one and two. Straco spins the ball in her right hand. The wind up and the pitch. That one up at the letters, but just a little high. Two and two. These are exactly what you want when you get ahead 0 and 2. Nothing over the plate to hit, but just on the edges to try and see if you can get swings and misses. Boyd showing good plate discipline to hold off. Count now even at two apiece. And this one swung on and popped foul. Well out of play, maybe out of the concourse too. Had a high arc on it. Mentioned it yesterday. Hitting and pitching in the same game kind of gives you a unique perspective up at the plate. It allowed for Daniel Williams yesterday to have some success in just working long at bats, making Megan Bobie and throw pitches because she knew which one she could lay off of. Another foul back. Boyd just staying alive right now and. Only three strikeouts on the season, four walks. Has shown good plate discipline. She sacrificed bunted her last time up. That was back in the third. 2-2 two -two count. Storonko looking for a big strikeout. The wind up, the pitch. Another foul back. Just shortening the swing up is Boyd, and she's just making contact. It choked up on the bat a little bit. Like and these are all late swings, too. They're all yeah. back to the screen. Just trying to make contact. You can see she looks like she's almost playing for a walk here. She knows where the zone is and knows which one she needs to fight off. Just waiting for the pitch she wants or one that's well out of the zone. 2-2 two -two and just getting a piece. Totally fooled there on the off speed, but just tapping it to the backstop. and That one going off the very top of the bat, way out in front was Boyd. Sirocco got her guessing, but... This is a long at bat. Boyd is an old time hitter, no batting gloves. 2-2 two -two and that one hit her. Storaco, I'm not sure if the ball was a little slippery, but she just lost control there. And now you flip to the top with a runner on base as Skylar Schellmeyer will come up. That's a little frustrating at bat there for Alex with getting ahead 0-2, making a couple good pitches, then you know, just a routine battle, foul, 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 and then just loses control of that off-speed pitch. Yeah, I do think that Sirocco kind of lost control of that one because she hit kind of the back of the left leg of Lauren Boyd. And they're giving... Something's going on here. They're going to give a little... Looks like just a little piece of plastic to Taylor Bump to help clean out the cleats of Alex Storocco. The rain has made this field a little muddy, and Storocco did look like she kind of slipped a little bit a few times in that last at-bat against Lauren Boyd, so Storocco's just going to keep that in her back pocket should she have to use it again. The umpire going to dust off home plate as well. That is a variable that's always into play on fields that are in fact dirt. I mean, they don't have that problem over at Ray Fisher Stadium as that yeah. field's all turf, but the infield here, obviously, all dirt. Shellmeyer shows Bunt, lays it down. Bump's gonna have to make a quick play and got her at first. That's a nice defensive play by Bump on a lightning quick runner in Skylar Shellmeyer. Michigan finally gets a bang bang call to go their way. And now two outs in the inning. Runner moves up to second for the ever dangerous Rachel Lewis. Great job by Julia Jimenez over there at second base, covering ground to get over there to first base to cover that bun as Lou Allen was crashing. Perfectly executed, put that left foot in the inside corner, shifted her body on the inside and called where she wanted the ball. Great execution there from Michigan on that bunt coverage. Lewis at the plate, 356 hitter. First pitch coming way high. Carson jumps up to snag it. And now Hutch is going to go out there and talk to the defense, I think, on how they're going to handle this situation. Rachel Lewis, dangerous up there on the plate, especially with runners in scoring position. 356 average on the year, 19 RBIs.
as the pitcher comes in from the bullpen. Still don't have a number on that. We'll try to get you that as quickly as we can. Dirt keeps clinging to home plate, and the umpire keeps having to go over there and dust it out. Storaco stands and is ready to get back to work. 1-0 count. Here on Rachel Lewis. Lewis, five homers on the season, four doubles, four triples. Northwestern's going to need some big hits to claw their way back into this game. They trail 5-2 here in the top of the fifth. 1-0 coming right down the pipe for a called strike. Aggressive secondary lead on second base from Lauren Boyd. Carson popped right up into her throwing stance. Rain looks like it continues to come down and the seats that we can see outside the overhang. I'll go check at that in the half inning. 1-1 one, one is a called strike, 1-2. and two. Straco just going right back at the hitter there. That one right down Broadway with some velocity behind it. Lewis just watched it go by. 1-2 count. Straco spins the ball in the right hand. Carson called for time, though. She checks her wristband. We'll see how they attack Lewis here. One, two, check swing on a rise ball that just is out or is a little high. Missed the zone and another good pitch there. Straco's had good offerings with two strikes to these hitters, but Northwestern's shown really good at plate discipline, long at bats here in this inning. Hannah Carson was kind of up in her stance a little bit. Probably a called high pitch, two, trying two, to get Lewis to chase. Fouled back. Two outs and runner on second. Northwestern looks to cut into that lead. Michigan scored four in the bottom of the fourth off the inside the park ground ball grand slam from Lexi Blair. 2-2 two -two count, the windup, the pitch, swing and a miss! Alex Taraco fired up as she leaves the circle, puts up a goose egg, that's the shutdown inning she was looking for, hits one batter but strands her at second, Michigan leads 5-2 to the bottom of the fifth. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. One thing you can always expect from Alex Storacco is that energy. Every strikeout she's amped up, especially to close out the inning. But we are back on the offensive end for the Michigan Wolverines after putting up a big number in the bottom of the fourth, looking for some extra insurance runs here in the bottom of the fifth as the grounds crew tends to the pitcher circle, laying down some fresh clay. Some fresh dry clay, rather. Is it was getting a little slippery. We saw Sirocco have to clean out her cleats a little bit. Do up for the Wolverines is kind of the middle of the lineup. 3-4-5, Lou Allen, Taylor Bump, and Hannah Carson. Allen one for two on the day. Had a single back in the third inning. Taylor Bump followed up right behind her, so... The two seniors and the junior, Hannah Carson, are going to be starting us off. After those, it's going to be Lauren Esman, Julia Jimenez, Haley Hoganrod, and Lexi Voss. Voss, the substitution for Sierra Kirsten in the field and in the lineup. So I just went out there and looked at what the weather looks like, and it's just a steady drizzle. Nothing hard, but it's also you know, still coming down, and if you are standing out there for 10 or 15 minutes like these fielders, you'll get decently damp and it's going to keep that field a, a little wet, the dirt a little mushy and the ball potentially a little slick. Yeah, these steady drizzles are one of the more annoying because, you know, you're not getting poured on, but you're just consistently wet. Like it's heavy enough where you can feel it. It's not just, you know, basically a mist. As Jordan Rudd throws down to second base and Lou Allen walks out there to the right batter's box. We are set to go here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Michigan out in front, 5-2. to two. Looking to get some more runs on the board. Michigan putting up those four in the last inning, as we said, off the grand slam from Lexi Blair. Should be noted that that rally all started with two outs. Michigan never out of the fight. 
Allen at the plate. Taylor Bump over there in the on-deck circle. First pitch taking a little inside, ball one. You know, last inning I was going to say that you wonder if Northwestern was going to pull Boyd potentially and bring in Daniel Williams for a save, you know, in the later innings, but that's obviously now off the table as Northwestern has surrendered their lead. There's another ball, 2-0. and oh. Williams likely will be starting game number two of this doubleheader. Williams practically unhateable last night until the Taylor bump home run. They do have Morgan Newport, who's in the lineup today. She can pitch. There's a ball hit foul. Two and two now. Allen today, one for two with that infield single. It did look like Newport was the one warming up a few innings ago down in the Northwestern bullpen, maybe just trying to stay warm. 2-1 on the way to Lou Allen. 2-2, two -two, rather. I think it's 2-2, two -two, right? I mean, scoreboard reads 2-1. I yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, 2-2 two -two now as there's a called strike. Scoreboard sometimes a little little delayed, so never know for sure by relying on that. Now's the 2-2, two -two and that just misses. 3-2, and two. Allen. It's a tough pitch to take, but given the way this game has been umpired behind home plate, that's the correct decision. Full count now to Lou Allen, has worked nine walks on the season. Potentially in a position for number 10 here. 3-2 count. The pitch, he swings and smokes this one, just foul a little bit out in front of it. Fans in front of us trying to keep it light, but also encourage Allen, as we have alluded to in this game. Family members of the players, certain VIP folks, are allowed into this game. 3-2, ball four, high. And there is walk number 10 on the year for Lou Allen. Great at bat. Michigan probably not going to use a pinch runner yet. Maybe they will. Yep, they will. Thought they might let her play a little bit, but why not empty the bench even further? Kaylee Rodriguez, every run you can or you can get helps pad the lead and make it a little more comfortable for Storaco. Kaylee Rodriguez has scored eight times this year in the 19 games that she has played. It's going to be Taylor Bump due up for the Wolverines. Singled back in the second inning. Flew out to left field their last time up in the bottom of the third. Bump towards the front of the batter's box. Back foot lining up with the back of the plate. Shows Bunt, lays it down perfectly. And quick throw over. By the pitcher, Boyd, and that'll get the out. Perfectly executed bunt by Taylor Bump there. Put it down the first base line. Boyd, though, nice job coming over to get it and rifle it over, but productive out as Hannah Carson steps up to the plate now with one out and a runner in scoring position. Carson's a solid hitter with some power and a 305 batting average this season. She sacrifice or not sacrifice it was a productive out it was a ground ball to first that moved the runner up there northwestern was playing her for the bump but she moved the runner up anyway without attempting it it was a hard hit ball from hannah carson too had potential to get through the infield but yeah it was right at cochran yeah, cochran made a nice play going right towards the line lauren esman over there in the on deck circle she had the rbi on michigan's first run back in the second inning First pitch and a little out in front of it is Carson. Rolls it down the first baseline. 0-1 count. Carson, 25 hits, 9 RBIs on the season. It's been so steady behind the plate this year and last in the part of last season they got in. 0-1, swinging a grounder right back to the circle. Goes off the glove of the pitcher. Throw over, not going to be in time. And it's going to be an infield single. That was a 
Pretty hard hit ball went off Boyd's glove, then redirected over there towards Maeve Nelson at short, and then that was going to be a tough play. Carson's not the fastest runner, but she gets down the line well, and now runners on the corners and one out for Lauren Esman. Great squeeze by Cochran over there at first base, potentially saving a run. That ball sailed high into her left side and barely caught it, snow coned it to keep the runner over there on third base. So with Lauren Esman stepping up, Michigan, run runner in scoring position, two on with him on the corners. And with Kaylee Rodriguez, a speedy runner at third, a well hit fly ball into the outfield may get her home and you get Michigan their sixth run in. They already lead 5-2 in the bottom of the fifth. Northwestern two runs on just two hits. All came on one of those two hits, a home run. Michigan five runs on seven hits thus far, and Esmin at the plate first pitch fouls it off herself, 0-1. Esmin hit that one backwards through her own legs. Julia Menez over there in the on-deck circle fields it and throws it back out to Lauren Boyd. Owen oh, won the count. Infield playing in to prevent the run. Esman pokes this one foul. Now quickly behind Owen oh, 2, but a couple good-looking swings. Does have 15 strikeouts on the season. That is second among the Michigan players in the lineup today. Esman also second at batting average, hitting 357. Has a double in this one so far. And red hot the last two weeks or so. 0 2, that one high and outside. Good read right there by Lauren Esman, letting that one go. Michigan not sending Hannah Carson over there, deciding not to tempt the arm of Jordan Rudd behind the plate. 1-2, just low. That one real close from up here. <laughs> this, you know, definitely would be a different game with a different strike zone because these two pitchers have been pitching from behind way more than their command would suggest. Their command's been quite good, but this has been an extremely tight zone, and that's it helped the hitters. 2-2, two, two, that one bounces in. Now 3-2, and two, and Carson's going to go down to second. On the wild pitch, right now two runners in scoring position, and the count runs full on Esman. As you mentioned, Kaylee Rodriguez, great speed over there at third base, so huge stop by Jordan Rudd, sliding to her left side and blocking that one with the chest protector. Count runs full. One Rodriguez out. at third, Carson at second. The pitch, swing and a miss, and that's a good comeback there from Boyd to pump it by her. And now it'll be up to Julia Jimenez to get these two runs in. Huge, huge strikeout there from Lauren Boyd with two runners in scoring position. A strikeout there is big. Coach Carol Hutchins is going to go have a quick chat with the home plate umpire. Not sure what they're talking about. There's no substitutions have been made at this juncture that we can see, but Jimenez now to the plate. And she scorched a ball into right field back in the fourth inning and ended up coming around to score. One of those would make it a 7-2 game most likely. This pitch low. Both Julia Menes and Haley Hoganrod both singled in pretty much the same spot back to back. Their last time up in the last inning, bottom of the fourth. This next pitch will be number 100 for Boyd. 1-0 on the way, Amena swings and pops this one up, and there is room, but it won't be made there by Dunlap at third, came over. Not sure why the catcher Rudd didn't call for it. She was much closer to it, but deferred to Dunlap, who came running over and couldn't get the glove on it. Jimenez gets a little bit of a break there as he, just a soft pop-up in foul territory drops in. Yeah, long run for Mac Dunlap there, and an awkward play right against the net. 1-1, one, one, and whoa, boy, she's with a violent swing. I think it rode in on her hands, and her batting helmet came off, and the <laughs> ball went back to the screen. Not sure what happened there. Looks like the ball might have gotten fouled and back into her face. 
Menas with no mask on the helmet. Helmet kind of got spun around a little there, but she's okay. She's laughing it off, heading back to the circle now. Count will be 1-2 when we resume play. One and two count. This is a big moment for Boyd to keep this game somewhat manageable. Still will be an uphill climb for the Northwestern hitters against Durocco, but 5-2 versus 7-2 is a big difference. One, two count. The pitch down and away, another good stop by Rudd there behind the plate. You know, you can never count Michigan out. They scored four runs in the last inning off the grand slam from Lexi Blair, but all those runs and all those hits came with two outs. Looking for another clutch at bat here from Jimenez. 2-2, two -two, she swings and is out in front of it again and hits it well foul. And it will bounce off the screen, protecting that foul area on the left field line. There are some fans standing down there with umbrellas watching. That pitch low and inside. Defensive swing from Jimenez way out in front of that one, but lives to fight another day. Count will be 2-2. Two -two. Boyd puts the hand in the glove, the wind up, the pitch again. Jimenez out in front of it again and puts it basically the exact same spot. This one higher arcing though, it actually gets up and over the netting. That one landing on top of the batting cages right in left field. That ball was well hit, but as you said, way out ahead of that one. She continues to be just a little out in front right now. We'll do the 2-2 again. Swings and lines this one right to second base. Well hit ball, but it's going to be a manageable play for Lewis. And that'll do it. Michigan leaves two in scoring position, but they still lead 5-2. to two. Alex Duraco six outs away from locking this one down. And she'll head out there to begin the sixth inning. Michigan 5, Northwestern 2 headed to the top of the six. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. Man, that couldn't just, couldn't quite find a gap. We saw her put it between Cochran and Lewis in her last time up, which was that hard hit single that we mentioned, but that time just right to her. So Michigan back out on the defensive end. It's going to be Alex Duraco in the circle again. Besides that one mishap in the top of the fourth, which resulted in the home run, Michigan has looked pretty good, and Duraco dominant. No substitutions it looks like, so Michigan... Keeping it the same out there. Left to right in the outfield is Blair, Hoganrod, and Lexi Voss. And right in the infield, as always, Bump, Rodriguez, Jimenez, and Allen. I mean, if you look at the day for Starocco, she's made one bad pitch. I mean, you have two hits surrendered, and one of them was a blooper. And then you have two walks, which is acceptable given the way this game is being called by the home plate umpire. And then you have one where you lost control of it on a, probably a slippery ball or a slippery circle with the dirt sliding out from under her. So... Yeah, I mean, this game's been very, very strong from her. Just one little mistake. If she can stay away from that, she'll be in good position to lock this one down and get Michigan a big win in game two of this huge four-game set. I mean, a controversial call kept that in and yeah. going. Hannah Carson had the pinch runner pretty much dead to rights as she tried to steal second base. The pinch runner, Emma Bartz, was, at least from what we saw in the replay and the reaction of the fans, looked like she was... She was well out. I mean, she got up and started walking off the field before getting called out, and then the home run came just seconds later. First pitch to Rudd is a ball high, and if Storaco can handle this end of the game manageably, this is her last time through the meat of the order in, in this inning. 3-4-5, Rudd, Newport, and Zedak. 1-0 count. Rudd swings and loops this one to short. Diving play out of the air by Rodriguez for the out. Great play by Natalia Rodriguez, showing off the speed to cover a lot of ground and putting her body on the line. Just a little looping liner in the infield, and Natalia is not super long in terms of her height, but got just enough of a stretch there to make the play, and the first out is recorded on a really good hitter in Rudd. That'll bring Newport to the plate now. Rodriguez is playing really deep in the infield. Do Newport swings and pops it up. Out of play, foul, sky high. Newport, interestingly, she stands in the batter's box. 
Big time power hitter with five homers on the season, but she stands way deep in the batter's box. I mean, her left foot, her back foot, is about a foot or so behind the plate. There's a ball that flutters outside one and one. Her second foot, her right foot, is barely aligned with the back of the plate. Yeah, kind of strange. I mean, right now it's it's about three inches behind the plate. Kind of strange batting stance. The right foot almost hitting the outside line of the side of the batter's box. 1-1, one, one, nibbles on the edge, but it's a called ball, 2-1. and one. Newport 0 for 2 on the day with a strikeout in the first and a fly out to center in the fourth. Ever dangerous hitter. 2-1 count. That one off speed, Frozer 2-2. Two and two. Everyone playing pretty much straight up. Natalia Rodriguez and Julia Menez back near the edge of the dirt in the infield. 2-2 two, two count. Rain still falling. The pitch, that one rises high, 3-2. and two. Didn't quite get where Starocko wanted it. Big full count offering here to try and get to two outs with nobody aboard. Rain has lit up a little bit, but my trusty puddle at the bottom of the bleacher is showing me that it is, in fact, still raining. Yep. Full count on the way. And it got her just on the inside of the arm. And so that is the second hit by pitch of the game. Again, command of the pitch is a little bit of a concern with the ball being a little slick. I mean, it's been raining for a solid four innings now. Everyone's just got to be soaked through damp. None of the balls can really be completely dry as we enter the sixth inning, we're an hour 45 into this contest. Yeah, right on pace for a little over a two-hour game. And, of course, a second game will be coming up after this one, we assume. So that'll bring up Angela Zedak. First pitch starts her off. The changeup called strike, and... Newport down there at first. They have not made a pinch running substitution. And Newport, one of the base runners who doesn't have much of a threat to steal. No attempts on the season. 0-1. Flutters in there for a called strike. I don't see a lot of reason why you would send a runner down three runs and you're down to five, you know, five outs left in the game. You cannot be running into outs in a game where you're not down one run, you're down three. You need base runners. Especially with a good hitter like Angela Zedak up at the plate. 19 RBIs on the season. 0-2 swings and a high pop-up in the infield. Rodriguez calls for it, moves over, and makes the play. Two outs in the inning. Even I had to squint a little bit looking up for that ball. The sky is a light gray, but just very Actually, bright. this is softball and not baseball. Yeah. Can't imagine how they're dealing with it over at Ray Fisher Stadium. The sky pretty much... Almost white with complete cloud cover and just the dreary, dreary skies of a rainy day. So that means two outs now for Maeve Nelson. That one high, ball one. We don't need to say what happened last time Nelson was at the plate. She has had by far the two best swings for Northwestern of the day. A fly out to right that was the at the time the hardest hit ball of the day. Still wasn't super hard hit, but it pushed Hogan Rod back towards the track. And then the two-run homer in the fourth. 1-0. There's a called strike. Nobody else has hit anything terribly hard. Nothing out of the infield except for just routine fly balls to center. You can see Starocko's locked in. Frustrated after giving up that home run to Nelson. Her last at-bat was up 0-2 in that count for leaving a pitch over the plate. 1-1 one, one coming is a little high and outside. Starocko's pitch count is acceptable right now, 82, 80, and that was pitch 83. Be tracking towards around a 100 pitch game, which is perfectly fine in softball. Lauren Boyd, on the other hand, already has surpassed the 100 pitch mark. 2-1, called strike, 2-2. Two and two. have to think it'll be a combo of Williams and, if needed, Newport in the second game for the Wildcats today. Michigan... Almost certainly we'll have Megan Bobian starting the second game for them. 
Michigan didn't really seem to have an answer for Daniel Williams for most of the game yesterday, which is the main reason why Northwestern was able to pull out that 4-1 to one win. 2-2, two -two, swing and a miss. Sirocco responds well and gets Maeve Nelson, powers it by her, and that is a good clean inning. Allows another hit by pitch, but strands another base runner. Northwestern has left four on in this game. They trail 5-2 to the Wolverines. Headed to the bottom of the sixth. This is Michigan's hitter's last chance to pad the lead before Alex Starocco goes for the kill on the top of the seventh. You know, you hate to make excuses and blame things on uncontrollables like the weather, but it seems like the only mistakes, quote-unquote, that Alex Starocco has made are because of that, you know, steady drizzle that we've seen hit a couple batters, just ball seems to have slipped, gotten away with her in that one. She just left over the plate. We have a graphic up on the Jumbotron. Word that the Michigan field hockey team has just been named Big Ten Tournament Champions. It is going to be Lauren Boyd back out there in the circle. It's going to be 8-9 top for Michigan. Hoganrod, Voss, and then Lexi Blair. Hoganrod in her last time up. Hit a hard single to right field in the, in the gap between Lewis and Cochran and eventually scored off the Lexi Blair Grand Slam. Well, we'll do a little bit of a game recap as we enter the bottom of the sixth now. Michigan got the first run of the game in the bottom of the second. They had a runner in scoring position <clears throat> when Lauren Essman swung and hit a ball off the base of the wall in left field for a double. That put Michigan up 1-0. Alex Taranko seemed to be in command. You had a runner on first with two outs in the top of the fourth and then an attempted steal by Emma Bartz, very close play. And there's the first pitch to Hoganrod for a ball. Was called safe. Does not seem that that was the correct call, but Storocco could not uh, respond to shake it off. And just a couple pitches later, put a play, pitch over the plate. Maeve Nelson hit it out. That put the Cats up 2-1 to one at the time. 1-0 to Hoganrod is fouled back, 1-1. One and, one. and then the bottom of the fourth, Michigan had two outs, nobody on, and then things started to get moving. You had a... Hit from Jimenez, a hit from Hoganrod, put two aboard. Then they pinch hit Lexi Voss for Sierra Kirsten. She drew a big walk. 1-1 one, one on the way. Hoganrod swings, hits this one over to short. It takes a tough hop on Maeve Nelson, and that's going to be safe at first for Hoganrod. I assume it will be scored as an error, and it is. That'll be an E6. Haley's aboard. But anyway, after Voss drew that walk, bases loaded, two outs, Michigan... Had Lexi Blair to the plate, a 3-1 count, and then Lexi hit a tough chopper over to short that got by Nelson. That was going to be a tough play regardless. And then it got into the outfield. The outfield was playing very shallow for some reason, and Shellmeyer had to take a very weird angle to it, was not quite able to get over, dove. It rolled under her and went all the way to the wall in left center field, and it cleared the bases and brought Lexi home for an inside the park grand slam to put Michigan up 5-2. That's where we stand here in the bottom of the sixth with Haley Hoganrod on first base and nobody out here in this inning. Foss to the plate now. She shows bunt, lays it down, another well-executed one, and the only play is over to first. Boyd makes it, and it's one out in the inning. Since entering this contest to pinch hit for Sierra Kirsten, Lexi Voss has done pretty much everything she's been asked. Worked a walk in her first time up in the fourth inning and eventually scored on that grand slam, as you just said. And there, sack bunt to move Haley Hoganrod into scoring position. That's going to be Lexi Blair up now, one out, and a runner in scoring position. Michigan with grounds to score again. Blair at the plate. First pitch floats high, 1-0, and, oh, and it goes without saying that the decision to pinch hit Voss in the fourth so savvy from Carol Hutchins because they needed to get a runner on base to keep the inning going. And Kirsten's 270 on base and her complete inability to draw walks against a, you know, in a situation where the pitcher's getting squeezed a little bit. So there's a ball low to Lexi, 2 0. Just didn't seem like the right recipe for that moment. Hutch went to Voss. She's able to draw the walk that Kirsten very likely would not have been able to. Kept the inning going and allowed Blair to do the damage. They're looking for her to do more damage here. Lexi one for three on the day. 
all three times she's put the bat on the ball, they've been pretty good contact. There's a called strike two and one. Sharp grounder back to the circle. A hard line drive to right field. And then the grand slam. 2-1 count now. Rodriguez on deck. Hogan Rod at second. She's out in front of it, 2-2. Two two. Yeah, you mentioned Lexi making hard contact. You rarely see her strike out only four strikeouts on the season. Whenever you know she doesn't end up on base, it's usually a hard hit ground ball or a pop-up of some kind. She's in a 2-2 count here. She swings and lines this one. It's going to get down into the gap. It'll go all the way to the wall again. She's headed to second, and she will stop there with an RBI double. Hoganrod comes home. Another hard hit ball, and Blair makes it 6-2 Wolverines. That ball, as you said, hit hard in the gap. Zedak laid out for it after the one hop, but couldn't get there in time. After going 0-2 for 2 to start the game, Lexi Blair on a tear. Grand slam and an RBI double. And again, you see Michigan take advantage of Northwestern's poor defensive plays. That run in the first, or in the second they were able to score was because of a tough uh, misplay in the outfield. And then Esman brings her around, and now an E6 brought around by Lexi Blair. There's a ball hit foul by Rodriguez, 0 and 1, giving Starocco more padding as she will go out to try to get the final three outs here in the next half inning and close this game out. As mentioned, entering the weekend, Michigan first place in the Big Ten, Northwestern third, but only a game and a half separating the two entering today with the loss yesterday for Michigan, only a half game lead. There's a bunch shown from Rodriguez, throw down, not going to be in time as it got away from the catcher, Rudd, and now <laughs> the fans are cheering that the umpire finally made a correct call in their opinion down there at third base. Yeah, calls on steals so far in this series have been real inconsistent. Natalia Rodriguez got caught stealing twice yesterday, one of them a questionable call. 0-1 fouled back, 0-2. To note, that play at third just a moment ago was not particularly close, which is why the umpires were getting the jeers from the crowd. Sort of like when a, a goalie who's struggling makes a easy save sometimes the crowd will do that 0 oh, and 2 off speed man that looked like strike 3 but getting squeezed as she's been all day it's Lauren Boyd you know they always say umpires it's just got to be consistent it's been consistent so credit to Carlos Guzman behind home plate there yeah it's hard to get frustrated when you know exactly what it's going to be you can get a little mad as a pitcher for getting squeezed but other than that 1-2, and that rod out in front of it again, lines it foul. Jordan Rudd, though, held that last one for a long time on that off-speed pitch. Moxie down there at third. Michigan would love another run of padding. And with the speed of Blair, a fly ball to the outfield could get her home. Rodriguez doesn't hit a ton of those, though. 1-2 on the way, swings and fouls it back. Good at bat. Only one out. Runner in scoring position with Lexi Blair over there on third base. Lou Allen in the on deck circle. Zedak playing pretty deep in left field after misjudging that last one. Doesn't want to make the same mistake twice. The right fielder, though, Newport. One, two, fouled back. Playing pretty shallow out there. A good 10 yards in front of the warning track. Infield playing in, playing for that out at home. One, two again. That one a little inside, two and two. Rodriguez making Boyd work. Pitch count for Boyd, well over 100 at this point. Got to think she might be getting tired, especially with this consistent rain that is slowing down pretty much to a stop now, but not quite. 2-2, two -two liner into right center field, a base hit. That's going to go by the right fielder, and Rodriguez will head to second. She'll stop there, back-to-back -back doubles for Michigan, and Boyd is just getting knocked around right now these last couple innings. 
Now nine hits, seven runs for Michigan. They lead seven to two. These are the bats that, you know, really lacked for Michigan. We didn't really see him much yesterday. Only two total hits in that game. You know, with the outfield being turf and it have raining the entire time, you know that ball's going to skip in the outfield and it's going to go as soon as it hits the ground. That one just hard ground ball on the gap. And like we said, Newport just kind of misread it and got all the way to the wall. And with the speed of Natalia Rodriguez, that's going to be a double 10 times out of 10. And now Lou swings and just chops this one to third. Misplayed, went through the wickets, and over to first goes Allen. This is now just cascading for Northwestern, who's had repeated defensive breakdowns. Their pitcher's getting hit hard. This might be a pitching change. We'll see. It's going to be a meeting of every fielder for the team. Lou Allen, typically a power hitter for Michigan. That's the second time she's reached on a ground ball hit in the infield today. Yeah, don't say that every day. That should be an E6, and it is, or an E5, rather. That one will go against Dunlap. So now two errors in this inning. And right now, if you're Northwestern, it's starting to look like a longer and longer shot to come back and win this game. But you just got to finish strong, try to get your mind you know, mentally reset, because you have another game coming up where you'll start from you know, square zero again. Lauren Boyd is still out there in the circle, so she will face Taylor Bump with two runners on, one in scoring position. There's a ball to Bump. Runners on first and second. And only one out in the inning. Michigan already has scratched two runs across, one in the second. Four in the fourth, two now in the sixth. As Alex Duraco and the rest of the Michigan bench lead a go blue chant. And that one bump is way out in front of. Here the bump, like you said, early on that one, but got all of it. Hit the seams off that ball towards the side wall on the third baseline. Update over from Ray Fisher Stadium. Rutgers has now taken a 3-2 lead over the Wolverines in the top of the sixth there. 1-1 one, one to bump. She swings, hits this one hard. Left field, back to the track, to the wall. Is it fair? No, it just arcs foul. Trying to homer for a second straight day, and she just pushed it. Looked like it started fair, and then it just curved to the left of the foul pole down the left field line. You know, Michigan out in front by five now. A Comfortable, comfortable lead, but you got to think that one would have been the nail in the coffin. Would have put Michigan up eight runs. It would have ended the game. There's a swing and a pop-up in the infield. Actually, it'll push back just to the outfield, and Lewis makes the play. Would have been eight runs after five there if it had gone over the fence, something we haven't really talked about because it's been a tight game all day pretty much, and now all of a sudden you're talking about a run rule. Yeah, Michigan... Pretty much busted this one open in the past few. Four in the bottom of the fourth, and now two so far in this inning. So Carson to the plate now, two on and two outs. Yeah, right. I hadn't even hadn't even it wasn't even on my radar so far in this one. Carson swings, pops this one up. She loses her bat. It goes back to the backstop, and the play made in the infield by Boyd. That'll do it. Michigan strands a couple more runners, but they get two more. Pad the lead comfortably, and now Alex Taranko with a five-run advantage. Three outs away from putting this one in the book. She's the first one out of the dugout to go into the infield. Taranko with plenty of breathing room here. Up five as we enter the top of the seventh. Michigan, seven runs on nine hits. Northwestern, two runs on two hits. And this has been exactly what you wanted to see for Michigan after yesterday. You know, a bounce back in all of the ways that yesterday aired, right? Yesterday, they struggled defensively. This has been a very sharp game defensively. You know, struggled with pitching, been much better with pitching. And they only had one hit in yesterday's game and one run. And that's been rectified as well. So exactly what you wanted to see, if they can close this out here in the top of the seventh, they move back to a game and a half up in the conference over Northwestern. Obviously, Minnesota, a, a thorn in the side as well, but 
Right now you're just focused on the Cats because you'll get four stabs at the Gophers in a couple weeks. Defensive lineup, the same for Michigan as we enter the top seven, three outs away from claiming game one of this doubleheader and evening out the series one to one. Northwestern took the first game of the series last night in a four to one victory. Score from Minneapolis, Hawkeyes one, Gophers one in the fourth inning of that game. We'll keep an eye on that. Iowa and Minnesota are playing a doubleheader just like this doubleheader here. And Iowa, again, is a solid team. Top three teams in the Big Ten all in contention today. Michigan, Northwestern, and, of course, Minnesota, as we just mentioned. So it will start with a pinch hitter. Hannah Cady takes a ball high. Cady pinch hitting for Supley, 7-8-9 in the batting order, and these are hitters who don't have particularly good batting averages. Straka would love just a quick inning. Put this game in the record books. 1-0 on the way, and out in front is Katie. Katie's got a 200 average. Cochran behind her, 247, and Boyd in the hole, 114. We've seen the Cats really empty their bench so far. We've already seen Hannah Bartz. We've seen Sammy Stanley. Now we're seeing Hannah Katie. Katie only appeared in 12 games so far this season. This only her 16th total at bat. 1-1 one, one count. Swing and a miss. 1-2. and two. Sirocco blows that one by her. Katie not even remotely in time with that. Rocco well in the driver's seat now. 1-2 is the count. The windup, the pitch, swing, and a pop-up foul ground. Oh, boy. <laughs> Taylor Bump chases it. Looked like she was headed for disaster again as she tracked right towards those steps in the dugout that she slipped down in the first inning. But that one gets out of play, and she's able to stop herself. Yeah. Two Northwestern coaches standing in that <laughs> gap now. Just yeah, she sure was going to plow thing. right into them if she went down there again. One, two, that one popped up again in foul ground, but again it will arc just foul. Oh, and takes a tough hop right towards the noggin of a couple of Northwestern fans seated on that side, the section seven. You got to think the edge of those dugouts more dangerous than ever with the rain that's been coming down all day. Seems to have stopped completely now, and maybe some... Some inklings of sunshine coming through as the sky is lightened up a bit. One, two, the count. Straco spins the ball in the right hand, the wind up in the pitch, swing and a line drive, base hit into right field. It's a good swing from Hannah Cady, and it puts Northwestern in a little bit of business here to begin the seventh inning. And that'll bring Cochran to the plate. <laughs> Northwestern Stop. dugout trying to get vocal and will their players back into it. Just talking about personal wins for Hannah Cady, that's big. Yeah. You know, and only 15 at-bats this year getting Probably a hit this, and a the solid second one. best swing or maybe third best swing of the day for her whole team. Solid hit off an elite pitcher in Alex Starocco as Cochran takes the plate. Off speed, floats a little high, 1-0. Cady. On the year, yet to attempt a stolen base, but never out of the question. 1-0 bounces in, 2-0, and, and now Hutch is going to come out and have a quick conversation, just try to get Storanko to lock back in a little bit. She was ahead with two strikes, and then allowed a single. Lauren Boyd in the on-deck circle for the Wildcats. And you really want to get Cochran here and Boyd here before you risk, you know, flipping it back to the top of the order. Well, I mean, Michigan was three runs away from a run row. I mean, pretty much five feet away yeah. is Taylor Bump's home run, or would have been home run sale, just foul. But, you know, Northwestern not out of this game. Michigan scored four runs in the bottom of the fourth. Well, Northwestern only down five. You know, this does underscore the importance for 
Michigan of getting those two runs of extra insurance, taking a little bit of, of weight off of Starocko. And the defense. You don't have to play, you know, in necessarily if you don't want to. You don't have to be in run prevention mode, any of those things. Just play straight up and get the outs that you need. But another pitch sails high, and now 3-0 and the count. Alex Dorocco just needs to bear down here and throw strikes. He's got a comfortable lead and a solid defense behind her. And that pitch sails way high, and now two on and nobody out here in the top of the seventh. This is the shakiest she's looked all day, frankly, including the inning where she gave up two runs. Maybe he just needs to turn the page and get to the next at-bat. Start fresh. Lauren Boyd, the, t or the last hitter for Northwestern before the top of the order. Shellmeyer on deck. Starocko puts the ball in the glove, the wind-up. And that one, I guess, is a little high. Looks like it just got above the letters. Boyd has pitched six innings so far for Northwestern. Is very comfortable with that strike zone. Knows right where it is and knows which pitches she can lay off of. 1-0 the count. There's a called strike. Starocko is able to find the outside edge. Great frame by Hannah Carson there. Whether or not that pitch hit the corner without it, can't really tell, but Carson leaves that one right in the middle of the plate afterwards. One one on the way, swing and a ground ball, two short, flip to second for one, relay to first, got her! Double play! Just what the doctor ordered, and now Northwestern's down to their final out. That was smooth as can be. Again, the improved defense today showing off right there, Rodriguez to Jimenez to Allen, 6-4-3. And now Starocko can breathe a little bit. Two outs in the inning. And that'll bring Schellmeyer to the plate, representing the last chance for the Wildcats, down 7-2 in the top of the seventh. One of the best middle infields in all of college, ba or all of college softball. And she pops this one up, bump dives, and makes the play. A pop-up bunt into foul territory. Taylor bump dives. And that's the cherry on top for a really, really strong performance for Michigan. Bump jumps up screaming, and Michigan a resounding bounce back win to even the series at a game apiece. And we will have a second game coming up probably in around 30 minutes or so. This one ends at 2.15, so I think the next game would probably be around 2.45, assuming we're still on for the double header. We'll check that out, but uh, any thoughts about this one? I mean, that's a great team win all the way through and through. Alex Dorocco has been dominant all year, and, you know, at times she was in this one. Started off the game with, you know, a lot of strikeouts early on, but she, you know, wavered a little bit, let up two runs in the uh, fourth inning, but her team had her back the entire time. The bats answered in the fourth inning and showing off there in the top of the seventh. Very, very proficient defensive play. The double play from Natalia Rodriguez and Julia Jimenez and Taylor Bump, the diving catch on the bump to end it. Uh, we have been told that we are assuming there will be another game coming up. Haven't heard anything either way officially, but uh, assume the next game will be in around 30 minutes or so. Uh, we'll leave you there for this one, get a small break, and we'll be back at it uh, in just then. So stick around on our YouTube channel and Game two will be coming up for Charlie Brigham, Alex Drain. Final score, Michigan 7, Northwestern 2. We'll see you in a little bit on WCBN Sports. <laughs> 